Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Peachy from Physical Science. I am presenting a tutorial for your portfolio on measuring the orbital speed of planets. Um, this would be your final portfolio for the school year. And it's actually pretty simple, so hopefully um, this won't take too much of your time to go through today. First of all, I want you to notice that I have up on the screen your lesson viewer for the um, portfolio. Lesson 5 from Unit 5. And <clears throat> you'll notice that the last unit in physical science is on astronomy. So we're kind of ending off um, a little differently applying some of those physical science concepts that you've learned throughout the school year. Now it's a bit confusing because we have a measuring orbital speeds lab sheet here and then a link to the gizmo and then there's also a student sheet you can um, access from the gizmo. So what you're actually going to have to turn in is the lab sheet itself and I guess I don't have one of those open yet so let me um, open that for you. Okay so this is what's going to be submitted to me through the Dropbox if you notice. Um, Basically, you're going to be filling out this chart, doing some calculations, and drawing some conclusions based on um, it Kepler's laws. So you're going to be using his um, second law, I think it is, to help you to figure out you know, the relationship between the planet's period and its orbital velocity. So absolutely fun stuff and if you've taken earth science before with me very similar to another portfolio that we had in that class <clears throat> just using a different program so speaking of the program um, what you're using is a gizmo which I do actually already have opened here so you can see this here um, I'm gonna click off this additional information for now and I'm gonna go and click on earth because what we want to do at first is we're going to be just kind of looking at the Earth's orbit. Now one of the things you can get from here is if you click on lesson info it's going to give you access to the student exploration sheet and that's what you want to open. So I opened that already and I'm going to bring that over so you can see it. Activity C is what you're actually going to be doing so you can kind of print this out if you want to and um, answer the questions as you go. However, this is not what gets turned into me. What's getting turned into me is actually, like I said before, it's that other lab sheet. So it talks to you, gives you some questions. It says, how do you think the period of a planet will change as its distance from the sun changes? That is your hypothesis, so please make sure you make that before you do any of the sim. And then it says, click play and observe the orbits of all the planets. And then it's going to ask you to reset it and observe the orbit of, let's see, I think it was just Earth, yep. So look at the orbit of Earth and kind of put where it starts and where it ends and then write down the Earth's period. Remember, period means time it takes to make one complete revolution. Okay? So let's look at the gizmo again. <clears throat> And first of all, right now you can't see all the planets, so you're going to have to zoom out to be able to see them all. It's kind of hard to actually visualize all of them at once because the inner planets look so smooshed together because they are, well, the outer planets are actually so spread out. But you can kind of view, but look how slow they're going. It's going to take you a long time to sit here and watch that. So we're going to speed up their revolution gives us a better idea. Look how much faster those inner planets are zooming around the sun. Right? So we're watching and you know years and years are going by and Saturn still hasn't made a complete revolution. So I'll just go ahead and reset this and I'm gonna zoom back in so I can see those inner planets and it asks you to record um, the month, the day, and the year which is today here and the position of Earth and then watch it go through one complete revolution and pause it and check it the month, the date, and the year. My 
my hypothesis would be that it's going to be the exact same number plus a year. You know, since it's based on our year. Uh, oops, hang on a sec, Mrs. Peachy. Let's go back and do some slow revolution. So we can watch it. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little bit of a cold here today. So, as we approach, here it goes January, February, March, April. Ah! No, I went, I went too far. <coughs> Excuse me. I can't go back? Well, let's, we could go back. Yay! Perfect stop, right? Now, obviously, we're talking about our planet, which is based on the entire year, right? So, um, it would make sense that that that's what we're looking at here. And I'm going to refresh the screen, I think. Um, here we go. One of the things that you need to do is to look at the additional data and fill that out in your data table. So if I look under additional data, and of course the sun is not going to give an orbital period, but I can start with Mercury. And it's going to give me the orbital period in Earth years. It's going to give me the rotational period in hours. I'm going to scooch this over just a little bit. Um, and that might be just the two pieces of information that you need. So getting our data table handy. It looks like you need, well, we need the mean orbital radius the circumference, the orbital period, and orbital velocity, which you can calculate, and orbital speed. So let's get mean orbital radius first. So for Mercury, mean orbital radius is 0.387 AU. Now an AU stands for an astronomical unit. It is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, so it's around 93 million miles-ish. But we use that as kind of like a basis to compare um, rather than using, you know, miles or kilometers because there's so darn many of those. So we're using the AU. So we can put that in our data table. And then, says circumference. Well, we got the radius, right? And circumference is 2 pi r. So we got to do a little calculation here. <clears throat> 2 times pi times the radius in AU. Then it says get the period um, from number 6. Well, let's go back and look there at our gizmo. Rotational period? No, that's not what we need. We need an orbital period. Oh, here we go. 0.24 years. 0.24 years. That's what we need. So we're going to put that down in here. 0.24 years. What did we do say here? I don't remember. Wait a second. I think I could type it here. Okay. And... I'm back here just a moment. 0.387 AU. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. 2 times pi times 0.387. You're going to have to do this on your calculator, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know how to do that, um, you actually have to take... So dark. Two times pi times point three eight seven. That's what I said. And that gives me two point. 2.43, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, that's 
is our circumference. Orbital speed, AU per year, you're going to take this number, boop -doo, divided by, no, excuse me, orbital speed, this number, divided by this number. So the 2.43 divided by 0.24, that gives us 10.1 AU per year. And then you got to change that to miles per hour. So here it says 1 A per year per excuse me, one AU per year is 10,604 miles per hour. So just take that 10,604 and multiply it by the 10.1. Um, so 10.1, excuse me, times 10,604, that's not right, 604. That gives me um, 107,100. That's the speed, miles per hour. So 107,100 miles per hour. Okay. <clears throat> so hopefully that made sense. If not, rewind it and watch that part again. Um, but that's what you're going to be doing for all of the planets. Obviously, Earth is the easiest. It's only, um, well, it's circumference. It's 1 AU here. 2 pi r is just going to be 2 times the radius, which is 1. 2 times pi, I guess. So the rest of them I'll let you figure out on your own. Then it's just some questions. Which planet takes the longest amount of time? Which planet takes the shortest? How does an increase in orbital radius affect average orbital speed? You do not need to do this part. Do not do this part of the worksheet. Make sure you save it as a separate file. Um, before you even typed into it, you should have saved it as a separate PDF file to your computer and then access that separate PDF to type into and save again before you upload it to the Dropbox. Otherwise, you run into the problem of having a blank document, which has happened on multiple occasions this year for many, many, many of you many times. So don't let that happen again. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's the gist of what you need to do for this portfolio orbital uh, speed of planets. If you have any additional questions, feel free to give me a call or you can send me a webmail message. Good luck and have a good day.